two. Hi, folks. You are watching and listening to a very special edition of Open Bar. I'm Mike Morales here in Southern California in the heartbeat of the San Gabriel Valley. That gentleman out there is... Hi, I'm Pablo Velasquez Martin. Uh, I'm in downtown LA, so not too far away from you, Mike. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, so you have offices in downtown LA. Wow. Uh, Office? <laughs> yeah. Office uh, is, a, is a very nice word. Uh, well, I call this a studio, but it's an office. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So I so appreciate like, it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for those folks who are not aware, uh, Pablo is the proprietor the 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 one man show and if you're looking at the behind him those are the cases of this new tequila you you got if you have not seen our review it's called Risenor. i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly because um it, you know this is this is the juice and and folks uh uh dave and i did the uh the, the review and i gotta tell you we fell all over ourselves with the quality and the depth of this Blanco. I, I honestly, and I think I said this on the review, I have not had a Blanco like this. It reminds me of the stuff that I, you know, that I cut my teeth on 23 years ago, you know, when we first started Tequila Aficionado. And I said, and at the time, we didn't have any information on, on the process. We had information on you and your family. And then after we did the review, uh, you had uh, some of the questions that you had filled out for our profiles, uh, our Who's Who in a God of Spirits series of books came through. And I thought, oh, man, I wish I had this information before the before the review. So I said, best thing to do is to get Pablo on the line. Pablo's been nice enough. He's going to give us a, an hour or so of his time. Pablo, where did this come from? How did you get started? Into, why tequila? I mean, you know, what were you doing before all this stuff? Um, first of all, thank you very much for your kind words. You and you, um, you guys are very, very, very kind. Um, um, how do you get started? I mean, how far back do you do you, <laughs> do you want to? Uh, hey, go. You know what? Uh, I could tell by the quality of the tequila that, as I said, it reminded me of the old school tequilas I grew up with, and a lot of what we call now tequilas with pedigree. You know, uh, and in those days, it was Chinaco and it was. Uh, you know, El Tesoro and Tapatio. Well, Tapatio was only Mexican at that time. It was only in Mexico. Yeah. And so, you know, this reminds me a lot of that old school taste and feel, even old Espolón, you know, that was yeah. cheaper than, than Corazón. You know, we would buy Espolón because they would, they would at the time, they were being made at the same distillery. So go as far back as you, you know, I want to hear the story of the family. How, how did this all come about? Uh, well, it was so uh, via my dad. Um, I um, I was born in Jalisco, but I was born in Lagos de Moreno, which is you know a town um, close to Guanajuato. Okay. So you know this is in the nineties. You know, uh, all over that the Los Altos region, you would have to go very close to Guadalajara to find any agave fields. You know. Really. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, today, today, all of Guanajuato is like full of agave fields. You know, Corralejo is it's yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, you could you could grow blue agave and make it in Guanajuato. So it's yeah. surprising that that you you couldn't find any there. I think I think it was just the the market wasn't there just yet. You know, and I think I mean yeah, not like the CRT. Now. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. The CRT was born in '94, I think, and it, you know, the 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 the, the denomination was always just Jalisco. They started expanding it once once they realized that the demand was uh, was going to be higher than um, than they thought, or you know, had been previously. Um, but um, my my father, he is from Michoacan, but uh, he worked. Uh, <laughs> All this life for the government. He's in the in the agricultural sec sector. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I I gotta start with his story because he he tells me that um, what was it in two thousand when the, when finally the the other political party won the presidency. He thought he was gonna be out, you know, and he had yeah. been seeing the writing on the wall for a few years. So he started looking around to see what else he could do. And um, one of his, you know, we had like 
he knows everybody in Mexico, but one of his friends, he asked, he came to a friend from Jalisco and was like, hey, is uh, Agave a, a good business? And this guy was, you know, I'm talking about 97, 98. And his friend was like, yeah, they're getting on it. And so he did, he started planting agaves in 2000. His idea was just to sell the agave, right? He never yeah, yeah. had any sort of, uh, but then, you know, the agave was written in 2006. And what happens in 2006? Yeah, the, yeah. Well, that was the first one. And then I think, uh, we, you know, in 2017, there came that other one. You know, we've, yeah. we've had the, we, it's like every nine, 10 years, you know, you have that glut and you have that shortage. And, yeah. And you guys, you I, guys got in at a good, at a good time, I guess. Yeah. Well, well, the thing is like when he told me when he bought the, the plants, they, they, they had him, I think he bought in a 15 pesos per kilo. Wow. When he was ready to harvest, the price was 15 cents per kilo. Wow. So he was telling me that, you know, around 2006, it was, it was, it was, it was terrible. People, it was more expensive to, to do the, to Hima, to do the Hima. Yeah. Yeah. Than to just burn the, the fields. He, he said like a lot of people just burn their, their fields. And, you we know, heard, I'm talking heard, about. Yeah. We heard stories about that, you know, that, that it was, yeah. they let them rot, you know, in the fields. And it was kind of sad because, you know, yeah. now, we can, now look how things are. <laughs> you know? I know. So he told me that instead of, instead of burning these fields, he, he just pressed on. He, he, uh, he invested some more money and he came up with his own brand that he then sold as an art craft, you know? Okay. Uh, in big, like, uh, in big uh, wooden barrels, personalized wooden barrels, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's how, um, that's how he entered the market in like the late nineties. Uh, I moved to LA in 2004, 2005. Um, you know, having grown up in Mexico, obviously everything Mexican is very pervasive. To me, the cool culture was the United States, you know, to me, you know, I wanted to be here. I want to be somewhere else. Um, so at, at my 18, I moved to LA. I, I graduated high school in Mexico. I came here, um, so I wanted to go to film school, which I ended up doing like 10 years later. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Film school, really? Yeah, yeah. Wow, have you have you produced it? Have you thought about doing like a documentary on your family history and or or the brand or stuff like that? I'd love to go shoot all the stuff that's happening down there right now. You know, because the, the fields that my uh, my dad has now they're they're in um, in San Martin, which is a little community outside of the town of Tequila. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's uh, I, for how big the industry is, it's kind of a small community, at least around there um so yeah i mean you you have so many stories you know the people working there the the influx of like hundreds of millions of dollars that have come to the region in the last like five ten years yeah um all that stuff i would love to i would love to uh to explore a little more uh but yeah for now for resenor <laughs> um you know what happened was that once i was in the states and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't like a dumb teenager anymore. I kind of like started really loving everything about, you know, it's not like I, I didn't like Mexico. I love Mexico. I love growing up in Mexico. I love, you know, growing up in a Catholic culture, even though I'm not, you know, I'm like Catholic and, um, you know, um, just as a, as a way to, you know, as a way to keep customs and stuff. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Once you're somewhere else, you really start looking at where you came from, you know, and I think I think it's uh, I think that happened to me. I think, you know, that would have happened to anybody. So I started looking uh, back and, you know, when I've grown up in Mexico as a dumb teenager, too, I, I truly. Very not very often had good tequila, because honestly, it was just whatever cheapest we could get our hands on, you know. Well, a lot of the uh, good actually, stuff was was exported, right? I mean, all the good, all also, the good stuff was was for export exportation, right? Yeah, it was truly just for people that were connoisseurs or people who just wanted to, you know, buy something cheap and get drunk. Yeah, it's pretty much. 
Um, and I actually had a pretty bad experience when I was like 16 that put me off tequila for like a good seven years. See, so so folks, Americans are not the only ones with a bad tequila story. Sometimes Mexico too. Oh, right? No, no, I, I have a few other, like, you know, I'm talking about myself. But um, yeah, um, going back to Mexico, I actually, um, you know, one of the times I, I went back to, to see my uh, dad's field and it was like for the first time that I really got to see and to travel around the area, uh, you know, because this really didn't happen until I had left. Um, oh yeah, okay. For the States. Yeah, I actually, I didn't even know my dad had agaves or his own brand of tequila until like two, like early 2007, he came, uh, he called one day, he's like, hey, I have tequila, like my own brand. And we were like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, but uh, <laughs> sorry, I don't know if you can, uh, you know, um, curse in your podcast, but, no, no, it's okay. Um, We're talking about alcohol. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so once I, I went back and I started being exposed to, you know, everything tequila, and I really, mm -hmm. I had, I was mature enough, and for the first time I had really, really good tequila, and I truly was blown away. I think that was, that was the the time but i was like more people have to know about this like this is crazy you know right uh and so in 2008 by myself i started googling how to export tequila you know import tequila to the state it really started with that um and it took me it was all myself it took me a few years i i funded it all you know myself like as you mentioned in the review the bottles are stock bottles yeah um, yeah, actually, I would, you know, I would imagine the labels are probably self printed too. I, I think, but I don't know, you know, uh, I mean, I, I did design them myself and I like had them printed, you know, I, I for my second uh, batch, I'm, I'm going to fix a few things, but you know, I just, I wanted to get a tequila. That's what I wanted. Yeah. You want to get it out it, of the public and in people's, people's lips. Yeah. And, um, wow. Yeah, so, so the bottles were surplus that my dad, you know, somebody had extra bottles, so they sold them to me. I didn't, you know, I didn't buy them like directly from the glass manufacturer. Same thing with the corks. They're very, very high quality corks, but if you look at it, it's yeah. a HS. Yeah. I mean, these are these are these are these are like a composite cork, I think is what it is. Um, yeah. And no, if you I look mean, on top of it, if you look on top of the cork. Is this HS? Because that was for a different brand. I'm yeah, telling I'm, you, this is. Wow. Yeah, I. That's right. It does say I, I never even noticed that. Yeah. I I got him surplus for somebody from somebody else who had him. You know, and so I tried. Like I really did it all. Very, it's very homemade. I'll, I'll, well, um, so was the tequila. You didn't make the tequila, obviously. <laughs> yes. No. Of course. Um, yeah. That's what I, the tequila was. My my main concern. Um, so, you know, we went, uh, saw a couple of distilleries, but I fell in love with, uh, the Refugio, um, the, the tequila they make, it's, it's just. I was going to ask you, how did you wind up? Did you go visit several different distilleries? The, was it word of mouth that said, well, you should go here, or, you know, did someone refer you to this distillery or was it just, you just fell into it? Um, my dad, it was somebody my dad knew, uh, a chemist who recommended, um, the distillery. Um, they, you know, uh, and that was a hell of a recommendation, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I am, I'm like, I was very, very happy with, with, uh, with the end product for sure. Um, yeah, not a lot of tequilas come out of that, um, that distillery is, I think there was one at the time that was called Tattoo Tequila and it was in Florida. I'm not sure what happened to them, you know, but uh, they're 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 actually back, and uh, oh, good. yeah, tattoo is coming back. Um, they they were at a couple of distilleries because they my original exposure to them is that they are an organic tequila. So they, you know, as far as we know, there's only one, maybe two organic tequila tequila producers out there. Um, mm -hmm. But that's a whole other story. But yeah, tattoo has been around for a long time, and they're actually back um oh good i'm glad yeah so so when you know when we saw this distillery it's like there's not a whole lot of brands coming if any a handful of brands i think come out of there if that um, it's a small distillery you know yeah it is well it, so it, tell me tell me the process now now that you've been there 
is it uh, is it roller mill shredding? Uh, do they do it? The, I don't. I didn't detect any taona, so that I'm I'm sure it's not that old school. But maybe I don't know. Maybe it has that. Um, uh, well, they have the um, the brick ovens. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, and then they shred it. Okay. Leave it for twenty four hours. Send it to the, you know, to the stainless steel pots. Right. And you know, from there onto the bottle. <laughs> Good. No, I mean, you know, sometimes we. You'd be surprised how many geeks really want to know what what the process is. Where's your water come from? Where does no, it? Not, from? You know, they'll ask you that question, and yeah. I'm like that too. So. I, yeah, no, for sure. I, I love that. I love the way that people get passionate about the gila. It's really, it's truly my, my, my favorite thing to see. Um, especially when they, you know, when they really haven't had good tequila, you know, like you see something me like, oh, wow, there's like a whole world behind this. Um, yeah, I'm honestly, I, I mean, I would imagine they, they source the, the water from, from the, the, the municipality. I, uh, if they get it from aqueducts, I'm not sure. I'm definitely, I'll definitely yeah, get back I, to you on that one. <laughs> no, that's cool. You know, I I I get that. You know, you, believe me, you're not the first brand owner I've talked to who has no clue about it. Where you know, usually they they want a brand, they they love the quality, and they let the distillery do what they do. You know, and I and I understand that because those guys are the are the experts and other brand owners are very much hands-on, you know, but you're so, you're spread so thin. What, how, how, how do, how can we help you get the word out? Because folks, this gentleman drove by my house and dropped this off. Right. And then you went to Vista, which is in North San Diego County. And you dropped another bottle off to, to our guy, Dave, Dave Dinius, who did the review with me. And if you have not seen the review, go check this out. Um, the, I would imagine that those boxes behind you have a lot of tequila in them. And I, I told, I told Pablo off camera, that's great. I mean, I love it. That's a great zoom wall. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but none but of that's making you money, money, bro. Um, uh, so, <laughs> so what, how, what, where can people find it? First of all, because I know people are going to ask that question after they see the review, if they haven't looked at it, they're going to go, where can I get it? Because there are a lot of guys old school dogs like me, younger people that, you know, your generation and even younger, like you said, you know, you have, you have now a newer appreciation of tequila because, you know, when you were young and dumb, you know, you didn't care what the hell it was you were drinking. Right. But now, now that you look back and you come back to it and you see it with new eyes, a new perspective, you know, you're, you really get a, a, a better appreciation for what the real stuff is because it doesn't taste anything like what you know what we grew up with what we cut our teeth on but this does what you know in my journey in my 23 years with tequila aficionado it really does remind me of the old school tequilas that a lot of the younger generation a lot of the mainstream has never had and and i really feel that this is a great example right now of what some of those classic tequilas that i mentioned earlier used to taste like and they don't anymore it, for whatever reason you know they changed distilleries they they gained larger uh distribution you know they you know things change. change right yeah they, things change so first of all how does where do we find it how do we get it and and you know do they have to get in contact with you do they do it through the website how does that work for for everybody um i think Ideally, get in contact with me. Um, what I'm gonna do is just well, when I I I try to get the tequila here for a, for many years. It finally happened at the end of 2019, and then the the pandemic. How long did it um, take you up until nine, 2019? It sounds like uh, you were working it, on it like a, almost 10 years, right? I I was obviously not every day on and off. Right. Off and off permits take. Um, I don't know if that up and on permits take time, uh, gaining the knowledge takes time. You know, when I first started, I, I, I got in touch with a lawyer who said he'd do it for like, I think he said 15,000 at the time. And I just laughed, you know, cause I, I, I have $15,000 yeah. just to get permits, you know? 
Uh, but little by little, I the first time I I did the whole process twice. The first time I did it, and when I was ready, I went to Mexico and I realized that I have to do pretty much the whole thing all over again with the Mexican bureaucracy, you know, which is it's a thing in in itself. Yeah. So, yeah. so I the whole thing. I stayed for a couple of years again. I uh. I got the, the American permits. Now knowing everything I needed to get in Mexico, I paid people to do it, you know? And then, um, yeah, and then finally in 2019. Um, I know that's like a very, very fast uh, recap of like, what, like 10 years, but it really yeah. was just that, you know? Uh, in the meantime, I graduated film school from UCLA, you know, I worked, bunch of jobs i got the current job that i have that is full time um that i'm not in right now because i'm talking to you so thank you oh hey yeah <laughs> hey you know we'll make sure your bosses don't see this <laughs> um don't show them the but, youtube channel <laughs> uh because well also um then i got tequila here and then i realized ah uh, the bar marketing is the name of the game you know um getting distribution is the name of the game there's there's i'm gonna try to do it my own way i don't know if it's gonna work but i'm gonna try i'm gonna try to distribute it myself um and which so in california I, which in california you can do folks you can get you can be self-importation and self-distribution and a lot of a lot of young brands start that way you know i get it um Oh, is it different in other states where you can't you you can only get the importer's permit? The uh, I don't. You know, I, I lived in Texas for eight years. I've lived in New I lived in New Mexico for eighteen years, uh, and every state's got different quirks yeah. with their liquor laws. You know, even even though, let's say you were a big brand. Let's say you got distribution and you're you're really killing it in Southern California. You're in Nevada. You're in Vegas. You're in Arizona. And then you want to go to Chicago, New York, and you got to figure out how how to what they need in New York what they need in Florida, what, you know, it, it's just, that's just the nature of the liquor business. So yeah. some of them are similar. And then I don't even want to tell you what it's like to get into a control state. That means, that means where, you know, where the state owns the liquor stores. Like we have one of our yeah. tasters who lives in Ohio and, and just recently uh, he's very well connected actually. And he, um, I guess people have been watching in Ohio, our, our videos, and they're starting to bring in stuff that was never available in the in the in the state liquor store. But just yesterday, oh. I saw Sotol. It's like Sotol, really, Sotol, really? Yeah, what? in Ohio. So you know, and if they can do it, you can do it. You know, it's just it's just you know learning learning. Like I say, you're you're in a process. To you, it was a dual thing: learning the process, and then you got to come. It it's still doing learning on both sides of the border. You know. Yeah. And, and then trying not to, yeah. to eat at the same time, you know? Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, it's definitely been, I, it's been such a good experience so far. You know, I, I, like I said, I funded all myself, so I don't know, I don't owe people money, you know, like I can take my own time doing things at my own pace. Um, that being said, of course, it's a business. I want to, you know, I, I definitely did it so people can taste good tequila. I also did it so I can, you know, get some money um but um but that being said you know like i do i do want to just take my time and uh and try to figure out my own way um right now it's for sale um uh, at a couple of bars in the high desert one's called la palapa um i have a friend who's a bartender you know he he took it to the owner the owner loved it he bought a few cases um i had it for a little bit in a in a liquor store in um uh, in uh oh my god down to five where uh, north or south south of san diego like or south, north, south, north to north to it's like south of la it's by uh what, morenos kind of like by whittier oh by whittier oh okay uh yeah. Yeah, it could be, there could be several. Um, yeah, we need to get you in a big name, like, you know, uh, one in, the one in what, near La Placita and, and Old Town, uh, LA, 
Um, of course, there's San Diego, but I think you're not ready for that one yet. You know, probably not Old Town. Um, yeah, but he would. I mean, he and would I also, it. yeah, I, I also, I, I mean, I have only about maybe 200 bottles left. I didn't bring that many, the, and I, I sold a, a good bunch to um, to a film festival as soon as I brought it in. Um, you know, so that 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 was good. But other than that, yeah, I need to do either uh, liquor stores or bars or restaurants, you know? I would mm -hmm. love to, you know, if it was wine, I could sell it myself uh, online, but, but it's a distilled spirit and I, I guess California is not, you know. No, because that's a, you have to, you have to have a, it's a three tier system. So you don't want to be, you, you can't sell it yourself, but, but there are, um, there are companies out there that uh, 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 can probably help you um, distribute this, and, and you. I'll discuss this with you offline. Um, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't want to say something because that because ultimately it's not my business; it's their business. So they they need to contact you. But I got to tell you, there this would be a shame if people out there. No, seriously, this is a shame that people out there who who really love quality. You know, that's why we do what we do at Tequila Aficionado. We love these new startup brands. I look for them all the time. I, I found you on Instagram. I know. I was, I was very happy you, you contacted me, Mike. Oh, Dude. that's what we do. That, I mean, you know, wherever the brand is, I mean, like I say, in the last 23 years, first it started on Twitter and then, of course, Facebook. And then it just keeps graduating. Whatever whatever platform they are on, we're on, you know, and um, and to my knowledge, we're the only ones that have actually done a review on this. There are some people there that, that will, um, you know, that will do reviews as well, but they, but even people who really love craft tequila and the quality that, that this is, this Blanco, um, they're, they're gonna, they're gonna want this hard. This is, this is one of those they need to have in their library. Um, and, it, and I, I would love to see it, you know, grow legs, and and really you know spread out um and i know you're you're a one-man band when when um have you dedicated certain days to actually going into other bars are you doing this word of mouth are you walking in with your tequila and and how how are you you know how are you doing it to get it past the lips to a decision maker um i've been going to a lot of places it's uh the thing that I also didn't consider before important of the, of the tequila is that I didn't bring any samples, right? So I've been leaving bottles to a few in a few places. Um, and I probably just haven't done my due diligence, you know, in terms of researching the place that I go to because it's, uh, it's just, um, I think the market is pretty, pretty like well established, you know, with mm -hmm. with like I said, with uh, with the distribu uh, dis uh, distribution companies already set up. I think everybody just kind of wants to have their like, you know, obviously their their business well oiled. They don't want somebody just coming from the street. Um, but but I think. Um, but I think I, 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 I'm, it's just a matter of keep doing that, I suppose, just going to places. I think next batch I bring, I'm gonna bring tons of samples so I can just hit every single spot I can think of around me. Uh, I've been dedicating it like a couple of mornings and like at least one day um, of the weekend, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I definitely in the next, I'm gonna go to Mexico at the end of the month and I'll be back um, early March. And once I'm back, I really just want to, you know, hit the streets with a tequila. I think ideally for people that, uh, that would want to order it online, I uh, find uh, someone who uh, has a permit to be able to do that. I think liquor stores could, uh, could, could, can mail, so, um, there, there are some liquor stores that actually, like I say, the old town liquors in, in San Diego, uh there he he's that guy is licensed in just about every state that's legal to to ship tequila uh again offline i can i can give you some yeah for sure i would i would appreciate it very much 
Yeah. Um, the, let me ask you a couple of things on, on the name. Like uh, a lot of folks, and I had to do some research on this too, because it, you know, when you look at the, uh, when you look at the logo, and I don't know if you can see that on my camera, uh, at first, because I lived in New Mexico for so long, I go, that looks like a roadrunner, but that's <laughs> not what the roadrunner name is. And so I had to look it up. I literally had to Google it because I, I uh, uh, the I, I asked a family member he, uh, here and I said, what Risenor is that? He goes, well, it people call it a mockingbird, but when you look it up in uh, when you when you Google the translation, you find out that it's not just mockingbird, but it's nightingale. And a mockingbird, we have plenty of mockingbirds in Southern California. They're they're all in my in my yard, you know, they're all eating the lemon trees. And but a nightingale, I've never heard. And I lived in when I lived in, in Texas, I finally got to hear the, the song of a cardinal. And cardinal car, cardinal voices are beautiful. They're, you just you can't see them. They're very shy uh, birds, mm -hmm. but you can hear them. And so um, you can actually Google online and you find the video of the bird, the nightingale, and its song. And it's beautiful. And apparently. There is a legend that when you hear this, the, 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 the call of a mocking or um, of a nightingale, that means you have a, it's a harbinger of, of company. You'll be visited by somebody, a family member. Or somebody. That was what they, that was what my family members had told me. Yeah. And it happens, you know, and of course, they swear by that legend. Right. Every time we heard a nightingale, we knew so and so was going to come visit. And son of a gun, every time, you know, so it's a it's a harbinger of, of visitation. So my, what, I'm gonna steal to that. You? How did this name come about? I'm gonna steal that because that's a much better answer than the one I'm about to give you. <laughs> no, no. Tell me why. Tell no, me thank why you. Why, but but then you gotta pay um, me a commission on that. So. <laughs> I will. The, the 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 name I wanted to go with a uh, original originally was um, Carmelita. Carmelita. Uh huh. Um, it's a Warren Seabone song that I, I love. It talks okay. about Echo Park. It talks about Ensenada. Um, who, by the way is, who, by the way, is still not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> really? I, I don't think so. There, there's, a, there's a Facebook page dedicated to, to Warren Zevon, and it says, get Warren Zevon into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So I don't That's know. That's just a shame. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Werewolf in London, man. Come on. Yeah. I mean, so many, right? Like, well, yeah. Well, anyways, let's not turn this into a music podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> of course, Carmelita was already taken because all every single name that you can think of has been taken. Yeah. Um, Including Don Pablo. That I, the, yeah, exactly. We, I tried Don Pablo. Oh, thank you. There, there's, there's probably five already. Yeah. Uh, but uh, about it with my partner, she was like, what's the name for Mockingbird? Because it could be Tequila Mockingbird, right? Right. And so what I did, was Google, translation of To Kill a Mockingbird in Spanish, the book or the movie, you know, whichever. Yeah, yeah. And it's translated as Ruiseñor, because all the translations, at least like back in the day, were from Spain. Right. And th there, there are no, um, there, there are no mockingbirds in Spain. There are nightingales. Right. It, the nightingale is kind of like, the, as far as I understand it, it's a, sort of a, a, a it's like more, a European it's more of a mockingbird. tropical bird, I think. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, my, my, uh, my heritage is uh, my folks are from Central America, and and so you 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 know that's you get that reason you are there. They have they have the night, but it's a nightingale. It's not a mockingbird. You know the mockingbird. Like I say, you see them all over Southern California. There are only so many birds we get here in Southern California: mockingbirds, crows, and seagulls, and everything else is too little to care about. Uh, you know, but so but a mockingbird does have it. You know. It it actually mocks. It sounds like someone's yeah, gonna yeah, sound yeah. Like a crow. You know they do that when they hunt. But a uh, but but a nightingale is very sweet. Uh, I I tell people go listen to that that call. It's very pretty. Um, hmm. So so I mean I 
No, I, 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 I love it for this. I think it's cool. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm actually really happy with the name. I also thought Risenor was going to be an easy word to for people. And then I realized it's not. I was like, it's just Rui and Sen it's people know the word Senor. Senor is like used a lot. It's just add Rui to it. Uh, also wrong there because <laughs> people are like, Rui, Rui, Rui Senor. Um, but I, I, I actually, it was, it was available. It was, the name was available and I, Honestly, quite like it. I'd like, um, I'd like, uh, yeah, I like the way it sounds. I, I just, it's a good name for me. I, it's a good name. It's a lucky name. You know what I mean? Because, because first of all, nobody's got it, uh, and secondly, you know, you can, exactly. you can come up with it, whatever story you want to tell them. You know, if you, you can give them my story. I don't care. Um, and, and it is. It is not so difficult to pronounce. You know, it, it it's funny because in English you just read it, you just read it phonetically. But I'm thinking because I I speak Spanish, it was actually my first language, but I've never heard the word, so I want to make sure that I don't mangle the Spanish. And I thought, well, it just sounds the way it sounds the way it's written. So yeah, you know, it's it's actually not it's not that difficult. It's just the word that's not out there a lot. I think right. Um, I think the tequila, will, tequila will call to you. It will sing. In fact, you have a shot yeah, of yeah. tequila and you'll have company. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, exactly. I, I love the company, you know, because it definitely everything tastes better with company. So well, I, I really do love that. That. Uh, that avenue, that angle that, you, that you've been giving me. Uh, but, you know, I. Yeah, actually, I then realized that the name for Mockingbird, like the Nahuatl name, or I'm not sure it's Nahuatl, but kind of like native Mexican name for it, it's a mm -hmm. It's a word that I grew up with. I like, you know, I heard it kind of like, uh, you know, the word, the word for Turkey, um, guajolote, right? Guajolote, Which, or yeah. Pavo Real, you know, the, one of the two, because that's, that's what we call them. Pavo, Pavo, Pavo Real? Pavo, 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 Real. Those are the Pavo Real, yeah, that's the other one. Yeah. Um, See, but at any rate, it. the regions, you know, uh, even the plants themselves have different names in the in different parts of the of like you know agave from Oaxaca. It's always different from what the any other region. They'll call it something else. You know, it's got yeah. a regional nickname to it. So it's 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 hard to keep track of you know all the all the names that these plants are are are, are named after or what their nicknames are. So yeah. I think I like it. I think it's very original. That's why I, that's why I asked you because, you know, it's the wording is not as tough to pronounce as it's as you think it is, um, but, you know, so so again, it, this is your this is your chance, your story to tell people how how can they get in touch with you? What what you know if it if it takes an email to you? What what's your preferred method right now at this point in its in its lifespan? Honestly, just email me. You know, I'm open to any sort of uh, endeavor, collaboration. You know, if you want it for whatever you want it, if you want to just talk about it, I'm I'm like I I'm just um yeah, I just want to get it out there. You know, okay. so so what's yeah, the proper, you can just put, what's the proper email if anybody wants to get a hold of you? How do they do it? Uh, just the Gmail, Señor Tequila. At gmail.com. Can can they get in touch um, with you over Instagram as well? Like we oh did. definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Instagram or uh, or email is gonna be your best bet. Um okay. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm also I have uh you know part of the whole thing that I want to do go and um I, I wanna document myself trying to sell it. So all that is gonna go on Instagram, you know, it's gonna go I, I don't know maybe TikTok is still around. Um so yeah, I, I, uh, I'm excited for that because there's, there's just so much more also, not just like, you know, Riseñor, I'm really excited. I'm excited for the product. I'm excited for the, for the brand, but I'm also just excited for all this stuff that is, uh, that is coming up, you know, like this, this, this shipment that I got, these are actually all empty. They're parts of the ones that I oh, already Okay, like, good. Had. Okay. Um, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I'm really I was a little worried that. about that. You know, I was like, that's a lot of tequila yeah. behind you, man. <laughs> Following me? Yeah, well, you know, that's the last yeah, thing you need. On 
the podcast. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it's not it's not that it gets it's not that you get hurt, it's that you you're losing all that tequila. It's all gonna break. No, no, don't lose the booze. It uh, really, it really it would hurt my soul more. You're right. Yeah, I'm, probably, I'm, I'm, yeah. A, I'm a strong head. Yeah. Uh, but uh yeah, no, I just told the um the future in the industry of the industry. I'm I'm so excited to see where it goes, you know. What, um, what, do, what do you have? What plans do you have for the brand? You know, once you gain some traction, what do you want to see it accomplish? Are, are you going to obviously people are going to ask you, when can we get a reposado? Are you aging anything now? You know, what's this? What I personally would love to see what this evolves into as an añejo. You know, you want to see the natural progression or if or if it's even in your business plan. You know what I mean? So. Well, I was gonna say I, I'll do. I'll, I'll see if I can get a barrel just specially for you. Because my idea, my because my idea from the beginning is just to bring tequila that I would want to drink. You know, I know that might be very, um, you know, kind of closing myself to 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 other opportunities, and in the future, who knows? But my number one idea is to just bring something that I um, that I like that I'm proud of. Um, Blanco is my favorite um, tequila. You know, obviously, I, I love that people enjoy Reposado and Añejo too. Uh, and if that happens in the future, sure. Um, I think for um, for the moment, the next uh, shipment, I, uh, the next uh, batch I, 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 I make, um, I'm going to try to get it uh, certified organic because uh, the Oregavis, um uh, organic but you know like the certification is a different thing right there there's a lot right. of things that have to and, to and they're kind of to. pricey too I yeah mean, uh and it depends yeah, well, that's who it depends on which um organic certification agency you go with you don't necessarily have to go with you know a, a one particular agency i mean mm -hmm. you could pick an agency in every state in the united states but you know the organic certification is a whole other it's a whole other thing to learn about so i'm not going to overwhelm you with that but i get the idea you know yeah. it's just finding the certification it's, it's still, organization yeah. we can do it yeah <laughs> for sure it's still the the idea is um yeah for sure having the idea and um and yeah just uh just bring uh actually what i also want to do is like start uh because you, have you been to tequila yeah i i just I mean, uh, as a matter of fact november i got i took a quick trip to a totonilco so we flew into we flew into guadalajara and then yeah um the next day we we you know cart went up to uh to the highlands but i've been to tequila twice actually the, the town of tequila but yeah, I've been, I've been to the Highlands. I've been I've been everywhere. Uh, you know, November November is such a good month to go, just because everything's so green. It's just it's beautiful. The weather's gorgeous down there. Yeah, oh, man, it really, it really, really, and especially yeah, when everything's green around tequila, it's like it's uh it's another one of those. It's like the tequila itself. You know, I would want people to to know where it comes from too. So another idea that I have is to. Um, to bring people down to tequila and kind of like you know um have them tour different distilleries like all the old places there's a beautiful canyon that like that has a river running like right um um you know at the bottom of it and it's kind of it's all off the the agave fields that, that we have near the town of tequila um there's some really cool stuff happening with uh, with uh, with actually growing of the agaves. I think it's uh, now that we have other you know countries wanting to to compete. Mm -hmm. I think it's really uh, it's setting up a really good stage for people to start really caring about you know the quality of the agaves as opposed to just churning them out. Mm -hmm. You know, because um, I think another another drop on uh, agave prices is coming in the next couple of years, you know, um, especially with all the people and like, you know, all the other countries entering the market. So, um, 
So I don't know, but I mean, other than that, just hope that the, the tequila market itself keeps growing. Uh, but we're gonna have to compete with quality. We're gonna have to compete with, uh, with culture, with history, you know? Um, so yeah, they're, they're, uh, my dad actually is it's really invested with a lot of the growers, even like uh, also as far as as far as the Totonis go and Amatitana, like all around there. Uh -huh. um, he's going around teaching people how to grow agaves without uh, messing up the earth. Without you know, fertilizers like, and chemicals, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I think at some point uh, fertilizers are always going to be, even if they, you know, they're, they're organic, they're, they're gonna be useful but yeah i think a lot of the techniques that people are using right now are really bad for the soil which you know in the long term it, it really ends up um it ends up in know, the water yeah yeah it, it, it ends, yeah exactly all that runoff and it ends up um hurting the, the agaves too you know mm -hmm. um so I don't know. I would like to also grow the the, the brand that way. But I think, uh, yeah, yeah. Initially, I uh, I'm just gonna try to uh, to go and get it out there. You know, have as many people try it as as possible. Um, I love your review it was uh, incredibly encouraging. Um, you know, it, I, it was encouraging for us to see that this quality still exists in the land of mainstream in the land of celebrity tequilas and you know um and right now there's you know, the buzzword the, the buzzwords that exist now are are additives and additive free and you know and in organic is another you know another buzzword but organic at least is a certification additive yeah. free is not you know uh, there's no certification for that there's a verification and that doesn't mean anything uh, yeah. So, you know, um, but it, for us, when we take, you know, because we again, we've been doing it for 23 years, myself and, and the founder. And then now with with all all 13, 14 of, uh, of our tasters throughout the United States, like I said, I've got my guy in Ohio. You know, we've got I have one in the UK. Uh, I think the uh, UK market, the UK market would love this. You know why? Because the guys in the UK, the people in the UK, they understand the idea of craft. They understand, yeah. that, you know, their their civilization is a lot older. They they understand what a denomination of origin really is, you know. And so, um, they they they're really big in the mezcals, and it's still a, a growing for me, from what I can tell, from what my 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 taster there sees. There's a there's a a definite appreciation for for craft anything, you know, craft beer, cider you know, whatever they, they've made they yeah. stuff longer than we have, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's part of their culture, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I think that they relate more to, to craft mezcals and craft and the craft tequilas and tequilas with pedigree with, with a name in the business that have been there forever. Like the, you know, the Sousas, the, the Orandines, you know, uh, some of the names have been uh muddled because you know like the don the don julio is no longer owned by don julio you know but the sons well, are making them sold right yeah yeah the, some of the sons and the grandsons are making tequila so it's a it's a matter of educating the public about where the quality exists now and and here i i don't want to see this get lost in the you know in first of all in the mainstream but I also know that there are people out there that appreciate the what quality craft Blanco tequila, and I've and I've had I've had I've known master distillers for a long time. I've had them in my house. You know, we've been friends with a lot of them, and they always tell me the first thing they tell me they will if if he's a master dist distiller of worth anything, he will put up his Blanco against anybody else because if you don't <laughs> like the Blanco, you're gonna hate the rest of the line. But if you like the yeah. Blanco you have a really good basis to be able to age your reposados and your añejos and your extra añejos and whatever you feel like doing, you know, 10, 20 years down the road. So and really the purest form of tequila, you know, that's like, it's real, that, that really is what tequila is, a blanco, um, which I, I, uh, yeah, I love, I love that. I, I, you know, I think there's so it's, 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 it's great that, you know, they figured 
to put tequila in all the whiskey barrels and you know that gives them a particular like taste and color right. and i love all of that but i wanted to get just you know like tequila in its purest form in a good form to to people that um hadn't tried it before you know man i gotta tell you if you have not tried this First of all, if you are on any type of social media, if you're on Instagram, particularly, get a hold of this this brand. Get a hold of this gentleman, Pablo Velasquez. This message is message me, all of them. Yeah, please you. hit him, hit him up. Uh, he's got he's got cases behind him that need to be emptied. He's got to get rid of them because um, he's got to bring back more. You know, I there's so many things that I I I wanted to ask you. I um, the 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 what does your family feel now that you're that you're you're you know you're out there pounding the pavement when you can you know what 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 kind of encouragement are they giving you are they or, or advice what are they what what sort of things are they telling you get out of it now <laughs> what are they telling you um you know what uh, my father has always been very yes yeah you know whenever I'm like oh I would like to do this he's like all right yeah do it but um helping me to the best of his knowledge i think um he's very encouraging although he is definitely more focused on his own thing which is just growing agave he doesn't manufacture tequila anymore you know after after the price is kind of sta stable stabilized uh he just sells the um he grows the agave and he sells it to you know um where the more uh, one of a hundred people that you know yeah, that always, yeah everybody everybody buys from everybody else you know so um, yeah now for this particular tequila how old were the agaves do you know i i, I the real there's a reason i ask i mean because it tastes you know as well as i do the longer the plant stays on the, in the ground the more of the characteristics of the region it acquires which is what we call towar in yeah. it's the French word. So do you know um offhand what, what the six to seven year. Six to seven year I yeah, got it. Tastes, that, that tastes about right. That yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I actually did try to leave them on the ground a little bit longer because I also know that in the last two years of the seven years they get most of the sugars or like I think the sugars uh double. So it's always kind of like, uh, at least for the from the business perspective, you have to be thinking like, why well, wait another year for it to get more sugar, or and you know maybe the price is going to be lower, or do I just get it out right now while the price is high, which is I think what a lot of people are are, are doing. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, on on my last trip in November, I I I told this to a, somebody. Well, uh, the founder of the website, I saw him this weekend, and I said, you know, what was interesting was that. On my first trip, my very first trip, the the plants and the hillsides were covered, and the, all the plants were huge. And you could tell that they were lot. They were, I don't know how old they were. You know, ten, eight. You know, in those days, the story was we don't. You know, they're there for ten to twelve years on the ground. You know, uh, and maybe it was like eight to ten, but it didn't matter because the the you know the, the demand wasn't like it is now, and the hillsides were covered. And the plants were huge, and it was literally very difficult to see to to look at them without sunglasses because the colors were so bright that mm. that the only other i remember when i lived in new mexico i had an art director um tell me that the, the reason people like to go shoot in new mexico is because one of, it's one of the last areas in the united states with true color where you can mm. literally see the colors are true and and when I saw the colors in in Jalisco in the in the hot you know in tequila on the way there, you have that red earth and that unusual green that you it's really hard to to copy, you know because it's a yeah. very unusual we you know we call it blue or green it's a combination of both you know it, it changes with you know with the sun hits it, and and it was hard it was tough to see you know you couldn't take your sunglasses off because when the sun's hitting it, it's so bright the colors are so bright that that you have to look at them through a filter you know what I, I mean? know yeah yeah I know. 
Now it's not like that. Now as on my trip up there, I'm lucky if I, I don't think I saw any plant older than four years old. You really? know, they were, they were small. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's kind of sad because you, I remember my first trip is what, that was the enchantment. You know what I mean? When you really just. Yeah, it's it. a huge, beautiful plant. Yeah. You walk between those rows and those things are up above you, you know, and, and, and I'm not very tall, but even some of the tall people that I went with the first time, you know, they're, they're, they're touching it. You know, they're, they're about the same height as the plant and you can't, you don't see that. You know, I don't know. I don't know where they are now. I don't know where, where people are sourcing agave that's five and six years old because uh, on the road, on the freeway there and back and, you know, the roads are still the same. The, the, you yeah. know, the, the pavement is better. Thank God. Um, but, but the road, you know, the one way to the highlands and one way to Arandas and, you know, the, the, that, that hasn't expanded. And, and, but the, but the plants are not as, not as big as, as I remember, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the same. Everybody's just getting them out, you know? So you're risking the price falling. You're also risking plagues. You're risking, you know, uh, and uh, it really is. I mean, there is something lost, but at the end of the day, when people are just, you know, there to recoup their investment or whatever. It's going to be, yeah, but you know, again, with all the changes coming, I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing those like huge, beautiful um, agave fields again, you know? I, I want to, I really do. I hope that that happens. I, I, I am aware that there are other countries now, grow, I mean, I wrote a book on it, so I'm very much aware which countries are growing. Uh, I didn't know that, Mike. I, I want to. Yeah, it's it's called Agave Spirits Around the World. You can buy it on Amazon. Uh, oh, you can go yeah. our website, and it takes you through not only Mexico, but you, I'm You know, when I did the research, it was fascinating to me how agave traveled, and it's not just blue agave. Obviously, you know, you have the yeah thirty the different varieties. Agave. You can make booze yeah. out of all of it. You know, even the one. <laughs> Even the one you you the one that the, the sailors took with them, they would use for rope or ballast. They would use it for for balancing their ships. But mm -hmm. those things you can make booze out of. You know and they they do in South Africa, they do in India, um, they do in in uh, New Zealand. They grow the, this delicious blue agave, and it's so light. Um, Australia, Australia is is getting. They're I know they, heart attack. They poach, they poached a few uh, very famous uh, people from from the, from tequila. They took them to Australia to teach them everything. You know. Yeah, well, there's uh, a, very, there's like, a guy there who's he was working for Louis Vuitton. You know, for uh, uh, Volcan de Mi was it Volcan de Mi Tierra? Yeah, uh, which is the one Louis Vuitton owns. They they wow. they um, he led that. Uh, uh, he led that brand and then the Australians, the company's called Top Shelf Interna International and they hired him away. I think he's originally Australian anyway and mm -hmm. uh, he's leading that that whole project and you can find him on Instagram if you're, if you, you, you know, I know you do a lot of Instagramming, go check him out. Yeah. Top Shelf International, they're documenting everything. They're not hiding anything how they're taking care of the agave, how they're photographing, yeah. you know, all that. And, and they're getting ready, you know, they're just about ready to not only distribute in, in Australia, because obviously they want to, you got to own your own country, you know, where you're at. Yeah. And, but I wouldn't be surprised you start seeing it on the U.S. shelves right next to you. You know, we I mean, have, it's going to happen, right? It's going to happen. Baby. UC Davis is growing agave for for the same yes. reason. Um, yeah. it's just, I, I just wonder if there's just going to be agave spirit or what they're going to call it. But you know, at some point, tequila is going to have to compete with this. Um, so I'm I'm hoping it really you know it's uh, it changes the industry and the land and the people for the better. You know, um, I do too. I agree with you. I I do. That that's my hope because it scares me. These headlines that I see, you know, in the business where it says this year tequila will overtake vodka and and you don't want that to happen that it's not sustainable as far as i'm concerned i mean you tell me your dad's a agave grower what well, i mean yeah 
Well, I mean, you also the CRT. Uh, the, I know there's gonna be another certification. You're gonna people are tequila. They're gonna have to get to uh, certify that that tequila wasn't made with um, with any exploited uh, land. Because right now what they're doing is they're closing off every every parcel that has historically grown blue agave is gonna have that certification pretty much automatically. But what this makes or what it's trying to make is to stop the deforestation of of, uh, of like all these jungles and forests in in um, you know in Jalisco. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean I I think. I mean, hopefully that'll 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 be a good. Um, they're all they're also opening the the denomination to a, a couple of other states. I think Nayarit and some. Not and, a uh, and sorry, another either. one. Not a oh, okay. then, Guanajuato, Michoacan, Tamaulipas. Tamaulipas. You know, it's only five. Yeah, they're, they're, but they, they, you know, we know we've had a, we have had we've had a Mexican agave spirit that is three miles from Colima, three miles outside of the denomination of origin. And yeah. and it's delicious. It's delicious. And it's not, you know, it's got a different, it's got a different character than this one, but it's yeah. more, it's a bit more robust, but it's just as good. You know, I, you would love the Blanco, as a matter of fact. If no, I, yeah. I, I love tasting the difference in like altitudes, you know, in yeah. like soil. Um I love this one because it's a, you know, it's like it's all volcanic soil from 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 tequila and it's all like it's all around there um so it really is like as tequila as you can get but i mean I, I, there's so much variety out there um and you know don't even get me started on mezcal right um are you are you a big mezcal guy do you do you enjoy that uh i do enjoy it but there's one that i will that i actually prefer uh than tequila the, the karwinski mezcal Have oh yeah karwinski it? Yes, oh my absolutely. God. Oh, I know the depth, never, I, the depth and the character from that from that plant alone, and then everybody who distills from that plant has a different take on it. You know, it's always you. you I don't know if there's a particular brand that, that you like, but I mean, if you try Karwinskis from different brands, they're all going to taste different. I'm gonna I'm gonna start getting on that because I I had it I had it in Oaxaca. You know, I had it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah it was like wild. Wild, it was made with wild Karwinski agave too. It was just, I don't know, something. It was so, amazing. So, but, so once once you get traction on that, are you gonna? Is that gonna be part of your portfolio? Do you want to have your own? I mistake? really, I really will try to. I will, I will. I'm gonna try to, um, you know, get some of that, even if it's just a few cases. You know, I don't know. We'll see. I really don't want to go for for uh, you know massive quantities. I want to go for for. Like having something that people will enjoy. Um, well, you, and like you said, I mean, everybody who's ever started a brand, they wanted they wanted something that they that they feel proud to to serve themselves and their friends. And what you just said, you know, earlier on in, in the hour, I've heard that from other master distillers that 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 you know that's that's generally the case. You know, I'm I I've heard it from anybody. From you know, you name a brand, I've heard it said. You know, if you don't, I make tequila for myself. I make it because I like it. I make it like this because I like to taste it like this. And if you like it, great. Then you know, but at least I can. I feel comfortable selling it and serving it. And yeah, you, you didn't say anything different than anybody else does. So you know, I mean, yeah. that's that's the right. And at least that's why we have open bar because it gives you a chance to tell people why you got involved in this. Now. If somebody comes up to you as young as this brand is and says, hey, Pablo, you have any advice for me? <laughs> you know, what would you tell them? Uh, to start a tequila brand? Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's hard if you have a lot of money. That makes it a lot easier. If you know people, that makes it even easier. So, you know, um, I think I would give them the, the the general advice that I give anybody that asks me my opinion about something. If you're passionate, go for it. You'll find a place. You'll find your place. You know. Um, yeah. That being said, uh, something to make a quick buck out of. 
that's 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 not in this industry you know no and i totally agree um so the last question i ask is uh where do you see this brand in about five years i mean i will have this brand as long as i can keep up the the quality you know mm -hmm. Um, hopefully the same, just more available to, to, to more and more people, you know, um, I, I think to keep this quality of tequila is not something that I can bring, you know, 50,000 bottles of maybe at some point right now, right now, no, and I don't even see, it, you know, but to, you know, take it, bring in a few thousand bottles at a time, uh, I would like to you know, see it, see it, making people happy. People that know, I don't need it to be the most famous brand. I don't need it to be, you know, the biggest brand out there. Um, hopefully it'll be, it'll be in five years, hopefully it'll be in some bars and some liquor stores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and other like, states or in, just in California? Oh, in other states, you know? I mean, I, yeah, I, right now, I, right now that you mentioned about the, the uk you got me thinking i have like some friends in uh in scotland i could probably you know i could i could talk to and see if it's like possible to send some over there my best friend just moved to madrid um and he does international commerce so i'm I'm also talking with him um yeah you, I would, said, you I know what to... you've got you've got two friends in two different countries and you might want to ask them hey can you source can you tell me who I can get buy an old old Scotch barrel from, and have it delivered to Mexico? And you got your friend in in Spain and go any any Jerez barrels that used that that I can buy, dude. You know, really? Why not? What's the worst that could happen? It's got to be it's got to be barreled in Mexico. If you have a good yeah. relationship with the distillery, they'll have it delivered. I don't know what they cost. I have no idea. That's that's way beyond my pay grade. Um, but you know, I'm thinking this this stuff has got enough character; it'll hold up to a sherry barrel, definitely a Scotch barrel, you know. And you even yeah. if you make reposados out of them, three months to eight months, you know. I don't yeah. know. I, I mean, you have. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'll buy one, Mike, and put your name on it, and, and I'll save it. <laughs> oh my God! It's a Kilo Fishing. Thank you. A special bottling. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I might, I might hold you to that, but you can, I, use I, our, I, you can use my story about Rui Senor. It's a harbinger of good news. You know, every time you hear the call of a, of a, and look, if you have not heard the Nightingale call, I, I recommend you go to, you go to, you Google it. And, and there's, there's a call, there's a video for every, go to YouTube. There's a video for every <laughs> bird call. And yeah. you know, I fell in love when I heard my first Cardinal. Because it didn't sound like any of the other birds in, in Texas. But that cardinal, that and they're really hard to see, even though they're bright red, but it's yeah. so green, they don't show it's like they're hidden. They yeah. you wouldn't think that the red would be a good camouflage, but it is. And but when you hear that 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 call and the nightingale is beautiful. And and so this the story about being at a harbinger of visitation, a harbinger, it's always a harbinger of good news. Hey, right I'm still in it, Mike. That's it. I I, I came up with that. <laughs> That's what I wanted to tell people. There you go. Tell them. Re, re tell them. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll take a barrel together. of either, and you know, we'll we'll have to go down to Mexico and taste it, and you know, and we'll and we'll take a crew down there and whatever, you know. But um, right, next time, but, next time you you're going to Mexico, let me know. I uh, you know. Uh, I uh, did somebody show you around our agave fields, you know, it's, sure. just, uh, it's really pretty down there. That would be, that would be very cool. I, um, I appreciate that. Um, I plan to do a little bit, you know, now that, now that things are loosening up and the pandemic and things like that, do, do a little bit more of the, you know, public appearances like we did this weekend and, and getting mm -hmm. out more. I, I looked at my passport when I went in November of last year, 20, 2022, and I said, "Wow, the last time I used it was 2016." The, you know, I got uh, I got to have more stamps that say Mexico on it, you know, because I really missed, right I missed it. I, I really did miss it, and 
you know, visiting the smaller, small to mid-sized distilleries. I mean, I tell people, go see Cuervo, go see Herradura, go see Disneyland. And then you go to the small water parks because that's where it's more fun, you know, and then you understand yeah. why, how things really work. Um, so, you know, is there anything else you want to tell folks that, you know, before we sign off about your tequila? Again, you can get a hold of Pablo Velasquez, get a hold of him on Instagram or Gmail. Uh, yeah. I, I would I would highly recommend it for anybody who's an old school dog or somebody who's really experimenting with, you know, you're you're touching base with the ocho tequilas and you're touching base with some of the new stuff that we've known about for a long time. Get your get your hands on one of these. You're not going to be sorry. This is a it's a it's a hell of a it's a hell of a brand with a with a I think it's got some great promise, which is probably why I had you on open bar because I got to know. I had to know more about where this comes from because, you know, you reverse engineer the the brand. You taste this and you go, who's this mad scientist? You know, why is it, <laughs> why does it taste like, who's this guy? You know, and because I met you very yeah. briefly, you were, you were like on the road, you know, you just like, you dropped it off, handed it to, handed it to me. And we spoke about 10, 10 minutes and you were gone, you know, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm pleased to be. You're very kind, uh, Mike. Truly, um, I'm. I'm really. I'm really happy I made that drive. I'm. You know. I'm really happy I made the drive down to Dave. Uh, yeah. D you know. I can say we both went. Oh, I gotta hide now. I have to hide this from me until I get another bottle. I can't drink anymore. This. This is. And the. You can tell, the quality of a tequila went by how how much Mike has had of it. And I and I wanted you I wanted you to be on on our show, but I didn't want to I didn't want to show people an empty bottle, you know, or or you know, booze that was only down yeah. to here, you know. <laughs> I'll um, save you another one. No, you know yeah. what? Save it, sell it, get it past other people's lips, because this this stuff I got to tell you, folks. Uh, for those of you who are who are you know tired of the mainstream, for those of you who remember the old school tequilas. For those young up and comers your age and younger, you know, that your decade and younger, they need to taste this because it is unlike if you've never had, you know, you talk to some of your older relatives and they say, I remember when Don Julio was Don Julio. Now it's not Don Julio. This is this is, you know, outside of the, the grandsons of Don Julio who are making wonderful tequila, there's still stuff out there. And that's what. That's why I wanted you on open bar because the quality of this stuff is rare. You know, it's rare. And I think, I think more people need to need to have it in their library. You know what I mean? I don't even call it a bar. This is, this is for your library. This is the one you share with friends and you go, you know, when I was young, this is what we used to taste and it's good. You know, so thank you for, for being with us on open thank bar. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for your amazing words. I I I can't express how how much it means to you. Uh, to me, thank you. I, I yeah. I my favorite thing is to see people try my tequila for the first time. Um, I used to say I love seeing people that don't know what really good tequila is, but this is my favorite now. People that really know what tequila is, try my tequila and tell me about it. It's the best. Ah, well, thank you. Because I, you know what, thank you for for sticking to your guns and, and keeping the quality there. And, you know, and yeah, cause I get it, you know, money talks and, and it's tough to say no and, you know, leave the plant in the ground another year, like you said earlier, you know, trying to weigh the options and um, I got, to, and don't, don't change the name. I like it. The more I played with it, the more I did research on the name. I love it. You know, uh, I, I think, I think you're at a really good point where, where you could, whatever whatever you do you layer the improvements on top of what you have and and it's only going to get better so um again folks Risenor, it means mockingbird but for those of us who are smart enough it means nightingale nightingale okay nightingale if you, if you, if you look up uh tequila uh tequila mockingbird in spanish it'll say Risenor. so that, that, that's the only the only the only way you'll you'll get to to see the name there yeah. But other than that, it is Nightingale. You're right. It is. Thank nightingale. you for calling me out on it. <laughs> hey, you know, I had to do again. I'm not. I'm not opposed to doing research. You know, I do my own research. I and that's what I encourage people to do. 
get do your research do your due diligence like you did i mean that's why you're growing your brand so slowly because you're the one man band now you know i don't even want to like i said i didn't even want to overwhelm you with with what organic certification requires you know you're probably better off getting a rabbi and having it kosher you know kosher yeah. certification but then again all of it all of it's down to winds up to you know money how much are you willing to pay you know yeah. what does it cost which you know which kosher certifying sect or agency are you going to go with it's always the same you know you're 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 learning uh as you go and so you're not yeah. you know you're going to become an expert at dis distribution and california laws and you know and then if you start yeah. to go like i said earlier you you explore the other states and every state's got a quirk every state's got a liquor quirk you know texas has a fourth tier that nobody knows about I've had one friend of mine explain it to me. I have a good friend who's a, uh, he's a distributor in Texas, uh, in uh -huh. South Texas, a uh, really good friend of mine. He's always, he's always calling me up, Mike, what have you tasted out there that we can, you know, that we need to get down here? And I told him about your tequila. I said, but I don't know where he's at. I don't know if he wants to go to Texas yet or what, because, you know, you're, you're the decision maker. So you tell us and yeah. I've got some friends in I got some low friends in high places and high friends in low low places. So, you know. Well, I, yeah. The other thing that I actually, I, I uh, neglected to, to mention is that it, it is important to me that it's uh, somewhat affordable, you know? So I, yeah, you're right. If like getting kosher certified, if getting uh, organic certified, it's just adding to the, to the price of it. I probably right. won't do it. I'm, I'm trying to, right now I'm selling it for $30. Um, I think uh, I think that's a fair price. I think you're, that's a price that everybody gets. You know like what? But take a look. I, I mean, here, here's what I tell people, okay? And you're getting some free advice here. This is consultation time here with uh, Open Bar. What I tell people is your, your quality, try to find a tequila that you feel has similar qualities, not exact, because you're not going to find yeah. exact. And then look on the shelf and see what it's priced at. That's where you should be. If you feel confident enough, that's where you should be. And right yeah. now we're seeing Blancos at $49, $50, $57, close to $60. You know, they're, they're kind of over $55. Yeah. If you're going to price this at $30, even the guy at the liquor store is going to put an extra $10 bucks on it, you know, the quality of this Blanco is, is so high quality that you're giving it away, in my opinion. Okay, that's my opinion. But I you know, you're, the, that, Mike. you're the you're the this is your brand, not mine. Okay. I get that you want to get it. Maybe, maybe your first batch, yeah, that's cool. But if you're if it helps you gain traction. And then the second batch you come in, you you tweak it a little bit, you come in with more bottles. Hey, I got a Jack up my price five, ten dollars. Nobody's by that point, you have so much traction with a lot of the old school guys that when they see an extra 10 bucks, I mean, that's fine. I'm paying 50, 60 bucks for such and such a brand, and I love it. It's in my it's in my bar all the time. You know, they're gonna yeah. let them make their own comparisons with the high quality stuff that's there, but sometimes you have to let you have to make the customer make the comparison himself so you go see brands like primo you know uh brands like uh don vicente brand you know the brands that you yeah. like i don't know how many i don't know how many you've had and what you've had but a lot of guys will tell you the same thing this is of the quality of don vicente of, Do, of lalo lalo's a little lighter maybe because it's different you know he's only using the highlands agave and your agave comes from nowhere else so the terroir is different but the quality yeah. is as good, you know, uh, so that's up to you. I, I mean, you know, yeah. that would be me, but we are, we are seeing uh, increases in Blancos here in California and nobody's going to blink twice if they have to pay 45 bucks for this. They're still going to call yeah. a steal, but $30, I'd just say back up the truck, put the, put the hatch down, load up the cases and, and, and have yourself a good old, and hoard a couple because, you know everything changes and the fear for guys like me is that this this type of quality is going to go away again 
or it'll take too long to come back into the States or, you know, it loses traction. Um, right now, we're happy that we caught you at a, at a, at a really good time because you're just, you're just launching. And so, you know, that's, but that's, that's the free advice. Like I say, it's your brand. You have a certain plan, how you want to attack the, the, the environment, you know, I could be completely off base and wrong. So uh, I can't hear you. Uh, you might have to turn on your microphone. That's yeah. It's a good thing I got the closed captioning on. <laughs> I still can't hear you. I still nothing. Yeah. Did uh, your headset die? All you have to do is, okay. All you have to do is, uh, uh, turn on your microphone probably. This meeting is being recorded. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was good. Holy cow. Uh, folks, uh, I just wanted to let you know that, um, uh, Paolo and I are going to sign off. We we had a, a little um, microphone problem, but that's okay. I think we got everything covered. Can you hear me okay, Pablo? I can hear you perfect. Thank you. Okay. Man. Thank you so much again for, for, for being with us on Open Bar. Uh, I love what you're doing. And, and, you know, keep listening for the nightingale. If you hear that nightingale, it's good luck. I'm telling you. Um, but thank I'm you again for, I'm, for I'm, having I'm, us. For, for you know letting us have you on, on on open bar and and we will definitely be in touch and whatever you do uh, please let us know if you're gonna when you start aging these in barrels you know like in a scotch or sherry barrel uh i'll be sure to come out there and sign it for you <laughs> so we'll get uh, it but again good good luck continued good fortune you have a great future ahead of you and 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 i i can't stress enough Stick to your guns, man. I'm telling you. Thank you, folks. If you're watching us on, on uh, YouTube, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Give us a like. Yes, please. Leave a comment, too. If you've had it, what are you paying for it? What are you doing comment. with it? And, and where have you had it? And, you know, give us give us some hints. And, you know, whatever you do, sip wisely. Tomar sabiamente. Bye, guys.